Yeah. I'm moving over here as I have a, a couple of slides which I, I would like to show you. Um, I, mean, I am a, uh, a bear for several reasons, but the one I would like to emphasize in particular is the consumption side of the equation, which is, I think, in mining analysis, often uh, the uh, little considered part of the equation. It's, it's, it's common to uh, look at the mining projects, add those together, come up with a view on mine supply, see how that feeds through to uh, copper or other metal production, but actually just put in a, a, a fairly ill thought out figure on consumption. Um, and I, I would like to show you why I think that is a mistake. If I can go to this, okay, F5, yeah. So this is us. Uh, won't go any further on that. Uh, let me see. Okay, the first slide. And here we have uh, how copper use changes over time. Now, it's, it's a fairly well-trodden um, ground to say that copper, more or less over time, goes hand-in-hand hand with IP. Um, if it did, copper would... Move, have moved year to year and will move year to year by the uh, part of those columns in grey. Uh, the IP percentage change has been converted to a tonnage figure. Above and below that, you've got two elements. Uh, you have uh, below that uh, replacement of copper, that's material substitution, and also losses through militarisation over time. These figures are based on work we've been doing for the International Copper Association, which is uh, an annual survey done each year. If you have that negative side, you also must have a counterbalancing side to get to the picture you have on the right, which is actual uh, consumption change over, what, over time. Now, the, that positive element uh, is comprised largely of the... Uh, precise structure of copper consumption. Copper consumption is very heavily weighted towards electrical applications. Electrical application IP is growing much faster than generic IP. So that's uh, explaining one element of consumption. And what you can also see from this is the huge potential variation plus or minus in each year. So you, it's a mistake to just say you have a certain percentage growth in IP, you will get the same in copper consumption. The range around that, which I show in this slide, taking out IP, is huge year to year. Okay, overall, and in many years, the pluses and the minuses more or less counterbalance, but they don't always do so. And that's always worth bearing in mind. And more than that, going forward, you have to consider, well, is there any underlying fundamental reason why those pluses and minuses, i.e. the structure of consumption, which is copper-friendly, and the losses to other materials, the losses to minimization, should balance, balance each other out? Well, no, there isn't any natural reason why that should be the case. There is a third element to change, which in copper has been hugely important year to year, and that is uh, the, the share of scrap. And we're talking here direct melt scrap, so this is beyond the point of refined copper. And you see year to year, the proportion of direct melt scrap changes significantly. And the blue, the top blue area is showing the change compared to uh, saying that the share of scrap is the same as the previous year. And, and, and th those are the differentials. And you look year to year at, uh, at the differentials, and the scrap element also has been positive for copper in the past. We've seen uh, there's more blue above the line than below the line. And there has actually been quite a substantial reduction in scrap over time in uh, direct melt. We think that that will cease to be the case, especially over the next two years when we're looking at lower prices. Lower prices, you get less scrap. 
but structurally also, that trend decline in the use of scrap is declining. Some of the positives that we have seen in the past, and this will perhaps come out in the conversation as we go on, are less reliable than they were. I mean, uh, the electrical and electrical de uh, electronic demand that we've seen in the past has been very much related to new applications, vast expansion in certain um, specific applications. Today, we're looking very hard to find those, okay? We've seen wind, wind turbines, we've seen solar, solar energy, electric vehicles as potential new big markets for copper. For one reason or other, or other though, we would say those aren't the case. So we would say, going forward, that copper will struggle to match IP growth. We see it as being slightly lower. That gives us, roughly, trend growth of the order of 3% per annum. The importance of that, if you look at a, a lot of the analysts out there, the numbers they're looking at are a trend growth more of the order of 4% per annum. Now, if you take that gap between 3 and 4% per annum, you're looking at a, a difference in market balance of 200,000 tonnes, all else being equal. Of course, that's 200,000 tonnes the first year, the second year, 400 the third year 600, i.e., all else being equal, you've lost a million tonnes of balance. Uh, so longer term, that is why we are bearish on copper. There's, there are other reasons as well, but we'll stick to the consumption story for now. Thank you very much. <laughs>